What is up, my gaggle geeks? And welcome to tonight's episode where we're gonna be talking about 2004. You guys already knew that because we've been covering the year 2000 for the past a little more than a month now. I am very excited for this year. This is one of the bigger years of the 2000s. And I have a wonderful host of guests here to talk with me about it. First, of course, he's always here with us and uh, we, we wouldn't have it any other way. Chaz, what's up, man? What's up? It's Friday. It's good. Yeah, it is. Man, Friday, I'm, I'm glad that it's here. This week has been, for some reason, uncharacteristically tough, but... It, it's been a long week, especially with Labor Day, like people having work off. It feels like we actually worked a full week, even though like we had Labor Day off. That's so. true. Like at the end of work today, I was very much like, how, how many days have I been doing this? <laughs> this week felt like it's been forever. Yep. But the, the Fridays, when they hit, they hit hard. And we have got some hard hitters today for our guests. You know him already. He's a returning guest. It's Jay Moore. Let's talk about it. You in? Where are you go? Where I'm you still go? here. It's always a pleasure to be here on Gaggle Geeks. One of my favorite shows on Fridays. Hell yeah, man. When is the next Let's Talk About It coming out? Uh, the next Let's Talk About It is kind of in the works right now. Uh, I'm talking with a couple of uh, special people from Facebook that I met and uh, trying to get them together for a show. Uh, I can't wait for it. We're actually talking about um, 1990 movies and the idea came from you. So. Oh shit! You're doing 1990 before we're doing 1990. Well, the reason why I'm now doing you can't be on the 1990 show, Jake. God, damn, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. No, uh, I do plan on doing the 1990s, but it's based on movies that made the 2000 movies, where people were actually definitely good at acting. Uh, so nice. Yeah. <laughs> that is not going to be the route we're taking on this, but. I want to introduce our final guest. He is a very talented musician, and you can check him out on Spotify with his new EP, Propaganda Holotape. It is Brent. How's it going, man? It's going well. How about yourself, Brent? So good. I've been wanting to have you on this show for quite some time because uh, we both worked together when we were working at StubHub. Rest in peace, StubHub. And we talked a lot about movies to the point where I was like, we should do some kind of show or something. And that, in a, in a way, kind of spawned this. So I love the full circle having you on here to talk about the movies of 2004. Oh, my God. That was a long intro. Why do I feel winded already? COVID? <laughs> yeah, that might be. <laughs> oh, God. Just Listen. kidding. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> oh, man. Well, let's jump into the first bit of this. And it's always the game that we kind of do where... I have a list of trailers that I have put out clips for for 2004, and we're just going to go through them and guess what the movie is. Uh, the rules are simple, Chaz. The rules are simple, Chaz. Okay. After the trailer's over, can <laughs> you then okay. say what the movie <laughs> is? If you know it right before and scream it, then it's all for nothing. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm glad you, you say this because before you never stated the rules specifically. I didn't have rules until you broke the rules. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Noted. <clears throat> but let's see here. Damn, maybe I do have COVID. You're coughing. Hey, you guys can still hear me pretty clear, though, right? Yep. Oh, yeah, we got you. Okay. All right, let's start right, with the first one the of 2004, which is... Eight. There are those who are born to be champions. Here at Globo Gym, we're better than you, and we know it. <laughs> <laughs> then, I know what this is. There are these guys. Boom, 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 boom. Do you know why I'm here? No, do you mean cosmically? You have 30 days to pay off your mortgage or you lose your gym. Who would want to buy this place anyway? Oh! All right, Brent audibly yelled, I knew this, so I, we're going to put him on the spot. What do you think? That's dodgeball. Yes, <laughs> dodgeball uh, is still funny. No, yes, oh, still yes, v very to this day. It's still good. I was a junior in high school when this movie came out, so that was like right in the target demographic for this film. <laughs> yeah, and I and I was graduating high school when this came out. It it was funny. If you can dodge a ball, you can dodge a wrench. Oh dodge, no, if you can yeah, dodge yeah, a wrench, you can dodge a ball. 
Ever Joe's <laughs> gym. Vince Vaughn was at his peak Vince Vaughnness, and for some reason he's in Freaky. I don't know if you guys saw the trailer that's coming out that came out yesterday for the. It's like a Freaky Friday sp- um, with a horror, horror twist film. where they yeah. go into the body of a serial killer by accident. Oh, no, I haven't seen It's like that. the hot oh. chick, but Vince Vaughn is Rob Schneider, and he's a serial killer at the same oh, time. Oh, wow. It's like American Psycho. So not dodgeball. Wait, so Rob we- Schneider? <laughs> yeah, that was I the actually hot- need to check that out. That sounds ooh, funny. The hot chick. Ooh, did we cover that one already? What year was that? Was it 2002? I think it was 2002. It was something it was around there. Yikes. <laughs> Yeah, that 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 movie didn't work anymore. But Dodgeball weirdly really holds up. It's yeah, it it's does got, even today's standards. It does. It's got great characters. It's got um, Alan Tudyk as uh, Steve the Pirate, who is like one of the funniest parts of the whole movie. Was Steve the Pirate? And I'm I'm not I'm gonna spoil it. Fuck it. At the end, where he shows up just totally clean shaven. <laughs> it's like no, it's me. I'm actually Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> That's good. Let's go yeah, to the next good. one what we good. got here. Hi, this is Ruben. No! Please leave a detailed message after. Did you call me last night? Um, no, I don't think so. Ah! Right in the house! <laughs> He's a ferret. So you can't really see anymore. Cute. This January. You know, I'm not really a big dancer. When you've never taken a risk in your life, the first one is always the hardest. Gentlemen, do we have any idea what we're looking at here? Is it perhaps to do with your movie background on your TV? Mm -hmm. You mean 50 First Dates? Yeah. No, that's Let's play it again. There is, it is a comedic actor. I think that's going to be the thing that will help you is figuring out who the voice is of the comedic actor. Hi, this is Ruben. No! Please leave a detailed message after. Did you call me last night? Um, no, I don't think so. Ah, right in the house. <laughs> He's a ferret, so you can't really see anymore. Cute. This January. You know, I'm not really a big dancer. When you've never taken a risk in your life, the first one is always the hardest. Huh. Hmm. Have I stumped my crew? You just might have, because I'm trying to remember what that I. <laughs> It sounds will, like something I've seen. I will I've give seen. you one more hint because Kelly, I'm Ruben Ferrets and indecisiveness. Along came Polly. Got me. Along came Polly. Chaz got it. Yep. Okay. Mm. I was about to make a very distasteful cum in the hair joke. I'm glad that he stopped me before doing that. <laughs> Isn't that Along came Mary? That's Along came Mary. There's something about Mary. There's something about Mary. There's something about Mary. That, that's the we're all the we're all fucking movie people. <laughs> and we're like, is it Along came of something <laughs> about a Mary? What are we doing here? My God. But. Let's move to the next one. For centuries, Europe has offered American tourists its culture, its culinary arts, and its mime. They're empty compartments. What what the hell are you doing? Oh, me scusi, me scusi. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, What? Big tunnel. I know this. Protecting me. Scusi! Jay. Eurotrip. Oh, he got it. Euro trip. That movie was actually I, I enjoyed watching it. I, I, I could watch that movie all day. This was around the time where Blockbuster had sales too. So this is where I got yes. that. Right. No, Euro trip. Spectacular movie for comedy. Did either of you two watch this? No? No, sir. I knew what it was, but I haven't <laughs> seen it. So yeah. well, all right. me and Jay have all I, all I all I heard was scoozy and I already knew. <laughs> exactly. That was that was where I was at. Too. Bonus I heard Squeezy and I was like, man, my friends was. are quoting that. Right? <laughs> Jade, bonus points if you can guess who the actor was. Oh, man. I know his name and it's at the tip of my tongue and I want to say Ali G, but it's not. Fred Armisen. Yeah. Yep. It was one of his first, well, it's, I think it's one of his first uh, actual like film debuts and played a creepy Frenchman that when you go into a dark tunnel and you're in the same cabbie as him, yeah, don't he's, be he's just close to him, and everyone's all, <laughs> <laughs> or you stay over there. <laughs> and it really spawned one of the one of the bigger like anthem rock anthems. I, yeah. I guess you would call it rock. I don't know, soft rock. With Scotty, Scotty doesn't, know. doesn't know. That was a huge <laughs> hit for that year. Everybody was singing the Scotty doesn't know song. And if you didn't know the movie, you would just think that it was just on its own a really just big hit. Song. You're right. Mm-hmm. And they made millions off of it too. 
<laughs> Speaking of millions. Benjamin Franklin Gates, you are undertaking the duty of the family Gates to find you know this. the most Fucking spectacular sorry, Jess, you were so about to say. treasure in history. <laughs> it grew throughout the ages and moved across continents until it was hidden by America's founding fathers. <laughs> Dude, that's National Treasure by Nick yeah. with Nicholas Cage. With Nicholas fucking Cage. That's absolutely right. And we have to put in the Nicholas Cage sound effect. I'm a kitty cat. I'm a I've actually cat. been on a Nicholas Cage binge lately. Oh no. I watched uh, Con <laughs> Air and The Rock for the first time ever. <laughs> really? And having having grown an appreciation for how meme worthy Nicholas Cage is, those movies were excellent. Con Air, <laughs> Con Air and was John great. Malkovich and I think it was Danny Trejo's first movie Dan too. Uh, like Yes, it was Danny Trejo's first movie. That is correct. Yep. Danny Trejo was, was just like this Disney prison film. rapist. <laughs> and then that was Dave, his whole also, character. Right. And I mean, that was an all star <laughs> cast because even Dave Chappelle was in that. Yeah, Dave Chappelle was definitely in that movie. I was, in the I was shocked. And, 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 and Big no, Rams. Uh, no, Con and, Air. And Con Air. Oh, and Con Big Air. Rams, really? Yeah, what? Big Rams was in Con Air. Um, Big Rams was actually a pretty big role in Con Air, yeah, too. Yeah, like him and John Malkovich are running the whole thing. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Well, I need to revisit my con airs. I, me and my girlfriend were just straight cackling for the last 30 minutes of that movie. Like mm. the cinematography, the screenplay was just, it was all done by like a five-year-old boy trying to describe an action sequence. It's just <laughs> like, much. okay, so they're flying through and they hit the donut man on the Las Vegas <laughs> Strip. And it's just like, <laughs> and you're just like, what? Right. Uh, don't forget if you're still on the uh, Nicholas Cage bins, don't forget Gone in 60 Seconds. Yeah, I haven't seen that. I'm, Brent, like, no you lie. just lifted up your arm, and I I don't know why I didn't plug this. Show everybody what your arm, what's on your arm. Mine, Brent. Oh, yes. I was like, I so I do that. I do professional leather work. Um, so I that was... explained the stand behind you. Yeah. Dope. So I actually uh, I worked with Black Raven Armory, like. I helped this dude move into a shop and he turned to me and he was just like, Hey, can I pay you money to uh, make professional grade leather armor? And I was just like, yeah, <laughs> like I'm waiting a while for somebody to ask me that question. Uh, and a lot of the commissions and projects that I worked on were actually from metal bands in Europe. There's actually a pretty big band named Orden Ogan that uh, the guy who taught me how to make leather was friends with. He was friends with the lead singer. So we made leather armor for them and we outfitted the music video that they have for this song called Gunman that has like three or four million views now. And I'm so, always so like, impressed with that kind of stuff. That's just like, that's kind of the tip of the iceberg. And like that outfit has since kind of, it was, it was, it was pretty mismanaged. I'll be totally honest, like financially. And so it ended up kind of disappearing, but they basically taught me how to do everything from the ground up. Like I can get like undyed raw leather and just turn it into whatever I need to turn it into at this point in time. So sure, that's a beautiful so cool. thing, man. Kudos to you, man. I we know need to make a need full some... hiccup cosplay from right, How to Train I need... the Dragon. Right. I mean, I could. <laughs> I'll be totally honest. <laughs> I have. You I could have a and then go to Comic Con. <laughs> yeah. When there is a Comic Con, when it's yeah. not. It, 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 it's I do gen. I do generally try to avoid like cosplay and stuff like that, just simply for the fact that like. A lot of people who are doing cosplay, they're kind of doing a one and done. And so making a leather armor outfit for somebody, I mean, that's, mm. we're talking like a full hiccup costume that's actually like the leather quality that I create. It's like, that's like $1,400. Dang. And Damn. so like, there's that's a lot really of That's really not bad comparatively though. Like for what I'm some people about. will do for their cosplays, that's not that bad. Man, but that's a lot my of rent. What are you talking about? <laughs> 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 that's my but like, fine. I'll admit. I'll, I'll admit. And so a lot of people in their minds are like, I only want to spend like what on a on a cosplay like that? I want to spend like three hundred dollars tops. And the way they do that is out of like warbler, which is kind of like that foam material. Like they basically do a lot of the armor segments out of really lightweight foam and plastics and stuff like that. And that's just all of a sudden that kind of like exits the kinds of stuff that I do. And so generally I don't appeal to like cosplayers because of that one and done attitude they have. But 
but I, I do a lot of other kind of stuff with it. So mm. Mm. very cool. Well, we, we always have to showcase that stuff because your gaggle of geeks is not just about movies, even though it's mainly just about movies. It's also about the people that are coming on and the things that they're great at. And you seem to be multifaceted with many things that you're great at. So okay. leather work is awesome. Enough schmoozing. Now to the next one. Yo, what's up, money? You got a problem? Nah, yo, hold my poodle, huh? Hold my poodle, dog. What, you want some of this? You want some of this? Mark, you don't want none of this, son. I take the both of you. Jay, I see a smile on your face. Do you know it? It sounds so funny, and I forgot what it was called just now. No. You said something, you damn it. <laughs> Brett, what did you just search? I just cheated. God damn it, I, I watched well, it. So you, I'm watching it. all of you bitches. I didn't know I didn't know what it was, but hold my poodle is a pretty funny line. So. <laughs> All right. You guys want one more one more try? Yeah. Yeah. Yo, what's up, money? You got a problem? Nah, yo, hold my poodle, huh? Hold my poodle, dog. What, you want some of this? You want some of this? Mark, you don't want none of this, son. I take the both of you. Is it Friday? <laughs> oh, damn it. You were so yeah. excited about it. <laughs> White chicks. No, it's white oh chicks. shit! <laughs> yeah, I was really surprised. None of you got white chicks. Dang. Dude, right, the, only, me... the only thing I remember from white chicks is Terry Crews singing that song in the car. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. no, I, I remember yeah, it through yeah. and through. He was he was dressed up as a white chick when he was at Hold My Poodle, son. You got a problem? <laughs> <laughs> it was it was like one of the first few times. That, yeah. Oh man, that was a fun. That's a fun movie still right so, it is it will like it, if that came out today actually it would not come out today i'm fairly <laughs> confident that that movie would not come out in 2020 right there was actually an article about that like would white chicks be able to be played in theaters or on tv in today's society as as of 2020 and most people were like no even the wayans were like yeah, there's no way. There's, there's no way. Well, he we got asked, we Yeah, he asked that. Someone asked him that question during a radio interview, and he was like, "Yeah, there's no way. There's just that's, no way." That's pretty I funny. I love Major Pain so much, but <laughs> I, I don't think I ever watched like White Girls all the way through, just to kind of like throw out my love for the Wayne Brothers. So. White chicks. You said white girls, but it, it's okay. We'll let that slide. White chicks. <laughs> he was trying to be more PC about it, Jay. Okay, <laughs> he's being a little more PC. He's not giving the film what it wants. <laughs> <Let's>, <laughs> next one. He's large. And that's a sign that the tank is full. He's lazy. And he's in love. Oh, baby. You're so cute. With himself. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just big boned, okay? This is a tough oh, one. Garfield. Shit. No, it's not. Um, Holy fuck. I shouldn't have said anything. Yeah, Garfield. That sounds How many like times did you watch that, Chaz? Uh, so I actually watched that when we were on a road trip to Oregon, actually. And we had like one of those portable DVD players, and that was one of the DVDs we mm. had. So I'd watch that throughout nice. the whole trip. So Bill Murray. Fat I was cat. old enough that I saw the commercial for that movie when I was in high school, and I was like, this looks like ass. <laughs> agree. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> Yeah. See, and I, I was I was in like third grade, fourth grade around this time, so I was I was a little young one. The film's so bad that Bill Murray had to burn it in Zombieland. <laughs> Eddie, yep. do you have any regrets? He did. Garfield, maybe. Garfield. <laughs> yeah. And I think in uh, Zombieland Two, they also make fun of it again because he's in the press junket for another Garfield, maybe. Oh yeah. And he's yeah, beating the crap out of people with like the cut signs and stuff. Oh man. I, I What's interesting that. is there definitely seems to be like the paycheck years for actors. Like Nicolas Cage to go back to him definitely had his paycheck years. Oh yeah. But oh, like yeah. every year like, is a paycheck year for Nick Cage, but he also has another like indie random. <laughs> like Hilaire to Space was great. Anyways, I, I'll, I'll get off of that. Uh, for <laughs> Bill Murray, he came out with Life Aquatic in 2004 yeah, as he well. Did. So it's weird mm -hmm. to think that like he had such a paycheck movie in the same year that he actually had like a fairly good and fairly iconic movie for what what his career held. Well, so. it's that classic. It's that classic line of one for them and one for you, right? Where. It might be something where the studio is going to let him be able to do this project, but the only way that he'll be able to is if he does this project. 
Yeah, he also did a Lost in Translation. This is that's 2003, so we don't get into that. Mm, but just movie. saying, like, oh, we were he, he was doing good yesterday. movies. He was doing good movies. And then he just like <laughs> did Garfield, like, <laughs> right? Ugh. Well, let's get that. Let's wash that out of our mouths a little bit, right? Who is that? Who's in there? <laughs> Okay, one more time. All right, Saw. pay close attention. God damn it. I'm going to play it one more time because you still yeah. said I should. That? that laugh right there, yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, what we got it. That? that was Saw. The first one? Directed mm -hmm. by James Wan and w written by Lee? Lay? How do we decide to say it? Lee Wan? Lee Winnell. Lee Winnell. Winnell? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who's directing horror movies now? So. That, hey, that? Didn't he just do Invisible Man? He did Invisible Man, yeah. And James Wan's moved on to like, the DC universe with Aquaman. So it's kind of Oh, cool. and he's, he also he came back for Conjuring 3, which was, was going to come out this year, but was delayed. Is he coming back for that? I thought that was Michael Shabbos. It's already movie. done. He's already filmed it, and it's, it's oh, in the shit. can. Okay. Yep. All right. I really let's... like James Wan. Yeah. I, I love the first Saw movie. It's <laughs> for so this being his first thing, holy cow. Yeah. He's a great director. And wow. even the actors that they had in Saw, they were great. Mm -hmm. Was it uh, Carrie Elwes? Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and, not, and and one thing I actually liked about Saw, even though it was one of those like horror thriller movies, and I don't do horror thriller movies at all, but I did actually enjoy the storyline. It reminded me of like listening to Saw as an audiobook or something like that. Like it was it was good. I liked the the storyline. So very good. All right. Speaking of storylines, I think we all might know this one pretty well. Damn it! Who typed a question mark on the teleprompter? I'm not lonely. I'm beloved by everyone in San Diego. You're so wise. Um, like a miniature Buddha covered in hair. I couldn't put a lot of the iconic lines in this because it is so iconic, but That's I know... Definitely... Anchorman. Yeah. <laughs> so. Anchorman, I think, might have been the most watched film for me of this year. I know we didn't have that as a list, but it was the most watched. I, on repeat, every night I was watching, every time the, the Jack Black kicked that fake dog off of the bridge, I would lose my shit for like five to ten minutes, not know anything that happened after that because I was rewinding it to go back to that scene. That movie's fantastic. Still holds up. Yeah. Dr. Henry Roth's best relationships were with his patients, and he wasn't looking to settle down. But one day, the unthinkable happened. Are you staring at me or her? Because you're starting to freak me out. And we'll see. Oh, Henry Roth, nice to meet you. Anyone, um... Huh, is that, is that 50 First Dates? I, I wouldn't know. I don't, I don't think it... Maybe, might be. Yes, <laughs> Fifty First Dates. What do you guys think of Fifty First Dates? I, I haven't thought, seen it since it came out. So. I actually watched that serious? movie like six, seven times in like a week because I actually enjoyed the performance that Adam Sandler did, and I could appreciate what he was doing. Plus, I was going through an emotional stage during that time, so um, it, it. I honestly felt really in tune with that movie i like drew barrymore's part uh i like everyone in the diner they were awesome <laughs> they, i mean that they, the diner kind of to me made the movie because he would go back to that same diner every day just when to see on just the the huge poly cook who's well, just peanut like on your eggs. betting with him and stuff like i All love right. that guy but the, the story itself, I, I got a little too emotionally attached to because I could see how much the dad, uh, who played the father? I, I forgot who played the father. Ah, shoot. He's uh, Sean's dad from Boy Meets World, which is not right. an answer, I grant you. But um, And he's also on, in The Water Boy. He's actually been in a couple things with. Right. He was in The Water see. Boy as well. Yeah, Sean um, Astin. Um, my, oh, I think we got it here. Blake Clark. Yes. And the, the level of being a dad is exactly what he was doing in that movie. And I think he portrayed it very well. I have a really interesting 51st date story. Um, so I don't know if you guys knew this, but I spent about 
six to seven months living in Hawaii, specifically on the island that they filmed this. Also filmed Jurassic Park. I think I lived about a half hour away from, it's called Kula Ranch. And that's where they filmed a lot of the dinosaur stuff, like the big handprint is still there. And they take like some of the, some of the Jeeps that still have the logos and like drive around and show off all the stuff that they had from set and things. But they also had this warehouse just a few streets down from where I was living, not like the half hour drive. And any, any time you would drive past and there was some new prop. It's like, what the hell is that? What is that doing here? And one day we drove past, we would see like a raptor just suddenly appear. And we're like, that's creepy because it's just surrounded by jungle. So it looks <laughs> like it could be an actual raptor chilling there. We had Dharma vans from Lost driving around. That really freaked me out. And uh. often, um, uh, this was the one we saw, I believe it was Drew Barrymore's Jeep, that yellow Jeep that was yellow from this one. movie. I remember that very vividly growing up because that was such a cool car to me. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, now they're just gas guzzlers and overpriced for what they are. Sorry, I'm a car guy too. <laughs> it's a pace. So. I also love 51st States. I think it has one of my favorite comedic deliveries. When Drew Barrymore hits Rob Schneider with the baseball bat, and he's running away in the distance, and he's just like, you crazy bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I love that scene at that live. Like, it's, it's a really good movie. I like that. Drew Barrymore sitting like, fuck you. I'm trying to help you, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I it so really love that. Adam time. Sandler and Drew Barrymore's on-screen chemistry is one of the strongest of any two actors that are involved with stuff. No? For, for a comedic that role, for a comedic role, I would agree. I would say in Romance too, The Wedding Singer, man, oh my gosh. Yeah, they, 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 they play off each other very well. And, and, and it shows. Sparks. It shows. Why are you making that face, Chaz? You disagree? Mr. I saw this disagree. film once? I, I, I didn't see it once. I just thought the last time I saw it was like way Or maybe way you ago. only think you saw it once, but you forgot. Oh, oh, don't, could don't, be because probably wasn't that good. I don't know. <laughs> oh, Jazz, don't, oh, God, oh, God oh, damn it! Don't wow. don't tell me you're a Sandra Bullock fucking what's his? Uh, <laughs> oh my! Ryan Reynolds? Yes. Are you one? Dude, of, that movie's you, fucking cute. Don't talk shit on that. We'll talk about wait, that when we come across wait, it. Wait, which <laughs> one? Done this. The proposal. The proposal. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. All right, we got to wrap these up. I I always get too wrapped up in talking about these. Well, because that's what the fucking show is. All right, let's go. Yeah, that's one. what the show is. Guy. No matter how many times you save the world, it always manages to get back in jeopardy again. I feel like the maid. I just cleaned no. up this mess. Can we keep it clean for, for 10 minutes? I know minutes? this movie, hands down. Well, that's, got, Jay. that's the Incredibles. That is there's the no, Incredibles. There's, there's oh, no shit. way... I could not know The Incredibles. One, because I watch that movie every month, too. It's on my movie yep. monthly watch list. That Directed by Brad Bird. Too. Yes. Great movie. Mm -hmm. Love The Incredibles, man. The, the, the story and the feeling you get when you watch that, you feel for Mr. Incredible because that's who he is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And he's just fighting just to be who <laughs> he is. And a society is telling him that that's not who you can be anymore. It's like telling Batman, hey, we don't need you anymore. Oh, wait, they did do that. Yeah. What movie was that in? Uh, which Return of the Dark last Knight. two ones were about that. <laughs> yeah. Return of the Dark Knight Part 2, they did that. So. Yeah. Mm. The Incredibles yep. like creatively inspired me too. Like I watch it behind the scenes and everywhere around the studio when Brad Bird was directing and making that movie, he had this sign up that said, use the whole Buffalo. That was like, it was an analogy that was compared to like Native American tribes who would use the whole Buffalo. They'd use every single piece of it for better or for worse. And that's in my opinion, part of the reason that movie turned out so like relatable and also just big like from the lawsuits to the family to like the kids having superpowers and what that means like every facet of that movie is detailed down to the smallest parts and it just it soars it's so good absolutely so. and and the villain being a, a non-powered villain and and honestly not really necessarily being a bad person at the beginning just wanting to help but having that turn very nuanced for a character, especially in an animated film, no less. Who played I've, the villain in that? Mm, I'm not sure. That's a good to look at. I've already right got now. too many screens up, so someone else has got to be the screen guy for that. But for what movie? let's talk about another 
uh, The Incredibles, but we can move to this real quick. It's just another group of supers, possibly? I don't know. And just what does this have to do with me? Last week in Paris, we caught four terrorists. Oh. <laughs> I know this one we too. To find out who sold it to them. We'll see if Chaz can Our get only it. hope is to have somebody act like a terrorist. We need an actor, and they say you're the best. All right, James Brent, say it on three. One, two, three. America! Team America, world Fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> How can you not get that movie, dude? Oh, I got no, no, no. That makes sense. I'm, I, I know that America, fuck yeah, and like that weird fucking puppet sex scene, but uh, that's not weird. More like iconic. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so mm-hmm. we gonna move on about that. <laughs> Jason <laughs> Lee played exactly. Jason yep. Lee played Syndrome in uh, Incredibles too. Oh, Incredibles. I hear that now. I hear that. My name is Errol. I did not know that. <laughs> but I just saw that too, and I was like, "Holy shit, that's Jason Lee!" So. Good news, first row of this is done. We've got one, two, three, four more left, and I think some of these are going to be fairly easy. Let's go to this one. Oh, this is uh. Well, I can't say this. Nothing. No, oh, um, I know what it is. It's a movie with uh, Tom Hanks, Polar Express, right? No. No, 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 no. I think I've got it. It's Harry Potter. And the Prisoner of Azkaban, yes. That's the That's last the trailer one that it? I saw. That was part Whoa. of it, yeah. Whoa. I have to take a specific Whoa. bit. What, what, what just happened? What'd I miss? That's the last one he saw. Oh, yeah, I didn't watch. I didn't watch any Harry Potter movies past up. that one. <laughs> Don't worry, you're serious? You're oh, not alone. Dude. I think the the last the last one I watched was the seventh one. That was the last one. I actually have to watch the. the eighth That's the last one there is, Jay. Oh, now, well, granted, then it's, then it's granted. I did read all the books, and I really enjoyed the books. But like, I just became disinterested in the movies. Past oh my before. god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Fuck it! We're done. Wrap it up. Wrap Which, it up. You guys can be... exit the the Zoom, okay? <laughs> <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'll be I totally like honest. This. I think that I may go back and watch the Harry Potter movies near the end because I really like Daniel Radcliffe. I like saw Swiss Army Man and was like, okay, this guy's alright. Isn't he in uh, a Kimbo something? Guns of Kimbo, yeah, I saw Guns that one too. Was it was it decent? <sighs> no, but <laughs> 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 it was it wasn't very good. Like it was funny when I was watching it. I wanted to like it because I like Samara Weaving. I think that Ready or Not was probably my surprise hit movie of hell yeah, dude. It was either last year or the year before. And she's like this kind of bride that's going through like, well, I don't want to spoil anything. She's good, she's a bride that's going through a scenario where she's going to get murdered. And she's actually really good in that movie. So Samara Weaving and Daniel Radcliffe are the leads in Guns Akimbo. And I was like, oh, this should be tight. And it ended up being boring. Okay. It was weird. I was like, I don't know. Well, it keeps it keep popping up on my my movie list of things that I, I'm supposed to watch, and I, my goal is to watch the movies. Oh, excuse me, that no one else is going to watch. So, being as that you've watched it for me, I don't have to bother watching it anymore. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's. It how has that kind works. of like it has like this weird low budget vibe to it, and the world has a hard time making itself believable. And so it like strangely like the premise it doesn't seem like it should be that hard to pull off because all you really need to do with a premise like that is be crazy, but it somehow falls short. Like it kind of feels like Suicide Squad, which that might be kicking. I might be kicking a bee's nest by bringing that up, but I felt like Suicide. Oh shit! I saw Chaz's (laughs) eyes light up like it was goddamn Christmas. But I feel like I feel like where Suicide Squad failed was in a similar vein where all Suicide Squad needed to do well well not all it needed to do like it's it's kind of like a big task <laughs> but it needed it needed to be crazy and unhinged and unpredictable and it ended up just being like oh we're all Piece of sad shit. We're all sad criminals. <laughs> Once you mentioned, you mentioned Suicide Squad and Chaz was like... Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. <laughs> I talk so much shit on it, dude. <laughs> okay. Question. Uh, we need to talk about the next one. 
All right, okay. which is an unscrupulous guardian. All I ask is that you do each unfortunate and every little thing. Fuck that you! Pops. The one goddamn rule that we. Oh my goodness. We did, we, Chaz. We oh did talk about goodness. that. Oh my goodness. We talked about that. Yeah. Was, well, you got it. You got it. Don't we have to move. We was, have to move on. So that was fair too. enough. Fair enough. I'm getting ready to say it too. <laughs> but, but okay, but, but you said you want to talk about what do you, what do you want to talk about that movie? Like how awful it was, or how much I like that movie? Actually, oh shit, I really enjoy a series of unfortunate events better than the Netflix series. Mike drop. Ooh. I don't like Neil Patrick Harris's Count Olaf as much as I like Jim Carrey. Jim, Car- Jim Carrey's a good Count Olaf. His Count Olaf uh... is really good, and I hope I re- like think of if they just picked up with that, you know. They just said, this is the continuation. We're going to do the rest of these. Maybe do it the same, but involve Jim Carrey. Because Neil Patrick Harris just did not work. For MPH me. didn't work, yeah. No. I agree. I, fair enough. Well, everyone can come up. Sideways with Paul Giamatti. You guys I would have never guessed that. I've never Neither would I. I don't even I know what that movie it. is. Yeah, <laughs> we, de- we definitely took us for a loop. Yeah, I just <laughs> recently watched that. Dude, a that lot guy. of the ones that I thought would be the tough ones, like you guys are just smacking them. Okay, I'll be quiet this next one. Well, cause, well, this is the easiest goddamn one. This is the last one, and then we're gonna start going through our favorites, least, and underrated. All right. I believe there's a hero in all of us. Gives us strength, makes us noble. Oh, okay, I know what this is. Don't tell me it's what I think it is. I'm trying. So where you been, pal? You don't return my calls. I've been kind of busy. Taking pictures of your friend. Yeah, of my friend. <laughs> all right, do we know this? On yeah. three. I'm going to say it too. One, two, three. Kick Spider-Man ass. Man two. two. Thwip. Too. Nice. Did Kick Ass come out this year? Was no, that an no, actual no. guess, or are you just? No, no. I'm just trolling. I'm, I'm saying that <laughs> because like people you're the prefer co-host and you're dude, fucking trolling people, the show. <laughs> people prefer Spider-Man Two over the first Spider-Man, but I think the first Spider-Man kicks more ass than the second Spider-Man. So interesting. Actually, that's a hot I take. Disagree. Oh shit. <laughs> oh, shit. I disagree. When that movie came out, I lost my shit. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that fight scene on the train, still to this day, is the most iconic scene you could ever have. Name one scene in Spider-Man One with Tobey Maguire that's any better than that. That the is a one fight point. scene in the third Jay act. Has got you mean that point. Power Rangers fight where half of it isn't even the actors and they're doing weird fly stunts? He kicks him and he Dude, flies with a wire into a brick wall. Super this actually fucking had dark, effects though. that still last. The, that train, and plus you got Joey Diaz jumping in, and be like, "You gotta go through him, you gotta go through us in the subway." Okay, but how dumb is it that they all lift him up and like move him across the train? Oh, it's fucking iconic, crazy, dude. So fish, yeah, dude. No way. <laughs> Not to you're mention, dissing, you're dissing the city. You're dissing dude, the city of New York thing. on this day, Chaz. Okay, okay. Really? Oh, really? <laughs> Really, we're going Ooh. there. I, I, I totally that. forgot Here. that it was that day. Here. Honestly, here's the <laughs> thing though: the, the 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 line that pissed me off about this movie is at the very end, where Mary Jane's like, "Go get him, Tiger!" Like, what the fuck? That's from you the comics. Dumb ass fuck, dude. I don't give a shit. If it's from the comics. That's bad writing. <laughs> Fucking stupid as fuck, man. Well, here's what I mean, I, I actually agree with that, and it also led into like, what was it? The beginning of Spider-Man Three. Oh yeah, go get him, Tiger. Like, <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I never liked the Mary Jane and Peter Parker dynamic in any of these films. The will they won't they stuff honestly just pissed me off every time because so they never are really. You saying you would, so are you saying you would rather have the Andrew Garfield version of? I think they did a much better and... job of me believing that they actually liked each other. I did not believe in any sort of the imagination that Kirsten Dunst and Tobey Maguire actually were like, oh, we're cool. Yeah, Man, think... he, and not to mention, he's a goofy, ugly looking dude. And she <laughs> like, <laughs> like, come on, like, you can't, you can't but help her feel for her. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, she's got this, she's got this. No captain, lies. What is this guy, an astronaut that she's dating in this? And that Peter Parker has to show up to do yeah, the photography Yeah, Jen, uh, Jay Jonah Jameson's son. So he, she, he is an astronaut. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, this frumpy dude, though, that lies to me a lot. 
and that continuously puts me in danger, maybe him. Right. Uh, we'll see oh, and, and and he swings across the city for some reason. I don't know. Gymnastics. Pilates. That upside down kiss. That w- uh-huh. I'll always say that that's money. That's Spider Man one though. Spider Man. That's Spider Man one. You yeah, got that's... Doc Ock, who was a much more fleshed out villain than Green Goblin ever was. Yeah. It was a fantastic performance by through him. through Green yeah, Goblin, uh, through Venom, and through uh, Sandman, through all the villains that Tobey Maguire had to face. Doc Ock was the best. Doc Ock know, was. I think Eddie Brock pulled it off pretty well. Alfred Molina, who played Doc yeah. Ock, was incredible in that. The, we that scene in the in the surgery room when they're first trying to disassemble his claws that is something out of a horror movie. It's no. terrifying. You know what it reminds me of? Uh, Independence Day. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what it reminds me of. When I the feel like it were killing everyone. Yeah. Go ahead, Brent. My bad. No, 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 that was me interrupting you. I'm sorry about no. that. No, but I feel he like it was run. really Sam Raimi like flexing his evil dead muscles. It, he totally. was just uh-huh. like, he was he was coming out strong, and he was like, you know what? I want my villain to be scary, and God damn it, I'm gonna make him scary. <laughs> <laughs> right? Seriously. So. And now he's doing Multiverse of Madness with Doctor Strange, and you better with believe that they looked at that scene and was like, I want some of that in this pseudo horror film that we're trying to go with. You know, I, I, it almost makes me wonder what if they actually reference some of his past work, like that scene from Spider-Man 2 in Doctor Strange. You know, if well, what if they bring in Tobey Maguire? Right. Know. You know, that that's or Andrew Garfield, all the Spider-Mans at once. You know, they all get multiverse. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. what if they do that? What about the ultimate version of Tony Stark? And so that's for another another time. I'm sorry, I'm rambling. No, no worries, man. Let's let's segue over though to what our tops, bottoms, and in-betweens are for this, okay? I want to start with Brent because he had the least amount of time to pull this out of and, and have picks. But for 2004, what is your best, your worst, and your recommendation for maybe an underrated film? My best is easy because it's already in my top five favorite movies. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Like did you like Kaufman's newest film then? I haven't seen it. Like it's on my list. Reviews but re- on the really website. Chaz see. wrote it. Gotcha. Too kind. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say you were talk not about Eternal, kind. Talk about Eternal Sunshine. Where where were you when you saw it? What were your feelings? I mean, one thing to point out is I saw Eternal Sunshine in a Spotless Mind for the first time after my divorce, like back in like 2015. And so Shit. having like a major breakup. And then watching a movie that explores like the different feelings of people in different phases of relationships and the pain that they can cause, like, and also like the hope that people have in being able to share their lives with somebody. Like there are so many facets of that movie that get explored from, you know, not just Jim Carrey and Kate Winslet's character, but there's like that one kind of doctor and his assistant there's uh, the assistance themselves between each other. Like there's lots of different themes that get presented throughout the movie. And then Michelle Gondry is my favorite music video director of all time. And so the fact that he uses so many of his camera tricks in the movie to make it look trippy without really using a whole lot of CGI or digital effects, it's awesome. Like there's so much of that movie that I love, not only from like the script, and the way that the characters interact with each other, but also for the way that it's shot and the way that it's really trippy. Like, I really dig it, so. That's a great recommendation. Who is, what is your least favorite? My least favorite movie? I was actually looking through the list, and what's funny is, when you look through a list of 2004 movies, it'll show you a lot of the ones that people remember fondly. And so I'm trying to look through and find one where I was like, oh, I was like overtly disappointed. I don't know if I can say that I really hated anything that I see in front of me like with disgust or disdain but i will say that i was disappointed by alien versus predator yes i I remember seeing that movie and i was a kid i grew up with the action figures watched the first alien and scared the shit out of myself and watched alien versus predator and i was like oh cool like i wasn't expecting like i don't know i wasn't expecting like an oscar worthy like masterpiece but i was expecting a whole lot more than what i got so <laughs> i can agree with that mm-hmm. well, what do you recommend for people though with 24 in 2004 i was about to say 2014 
Friday. for for recommending that that's kind of a weird one like i wasn't or i guess really underrated i mean <laughs> recommending um this is you guys are probably gonna like all collectively like groan at me and like facepalm but honestly i think that the the movie that's hard to that's hard for me to like understate how important it was for like indie comedy napoleon dynamite i can go with that that's a good poll that that's a good poll because Mm -hmm. i feel like a lot of comedy for a lot of white man comedy before napoleon dynamite was just like college bros and like all this different stuff and also napoleon dynamite showed like white culture is just being a bunch of weird ass people like we are and like it's kind of like this expose but it's It's also really funny and so like i I can really recommend it as being a movie that if somebody was like, what is one of the more culturally important movies of 2004? Like I was in Fairfield, California. I was going to Fairfield High. And uh, when this movie came out and my my high school, like like white people were a minority, like it was incredibly diverse. Like we had, we had tons of like, we had tons of Asians, we had tons of Mexicans, we had tons of black guys. And like everybody loved that movie. Like mm-hmm. everybody was saying, vote for Pedro. Everybody kind of came together to appreciate how weird white people are. <laughs> and yeah. like, it was, it was kind of this interesting cultural moment that was actually shared among all the cultures. And I, I, I don't know, I think it was really- Well, not just a white, so. a white male, but like a Midwestern small town group of weird people. You know what I mean? Yeah. We I played Tetherball. I saw that movie with my ex and her family, and they were the only ones laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. And and, yeah. <laughs> and, and and during that time, I was the only black guy in town, so you can only imagine. What <laughs> it's so, so weird. It, just, is so it, weird. It, it, is, it is definitely Jokes weird. just flying by every time. <laughs> That's had, exactly what it felt like. You had great picks, Brent. Thank you. Jay, we're cutting to you, man. You got to give us your picks. Because I know Chaz is going to have like 80 for each one. So I don't know whether <laughs> I'm going to take my chance before him. That way, at least I don't have all my picks already taken. Yeah, because you guys no. seem to argue all the time. So um, <laughs> oh. one, of, one of my favorite movies of 2004 is Denzel Washington, A Man on Fire. Um, you and because that also starred, I believe, Dakota Fanning as well as he was trying to find her. It's such a heartfelt movie. I first watched this movie with my dad. We didn't see it in theater. We waited for it to come out a couple years later. But when I saw it, um, my dad was like, "Now tell me, if you were protecting someone's kid, would you not do that?" I was like, "All day. There's there's no question about that. I'm getting paid to do a job. I do the job. I do it right." But in this case, this man has a physical attachment to her, you know what I mean? Like a birth. So it's only natural, you know. I I felt Denzel Washington in this movie. This is one of those movies that, you know, when you see Denzel Washington play in it, you have to pay attention. You know what I mean? That was definitely one of my movies. Man on Fire. Such a good movie. Um, The movie that I did not like out of 2004. And I'm sure you guys will agree with me unless you've seen it, but coming from a predominantly black neighborhood and black family, it would have to be Fat Albert, uh, mostly because that was not in my era. That was not in my time. But when I did see the actual live action Fat Albert, I was sorely disappointed. Uh, I mean, (laughs) I I honestly thought that Keenan Mitchell would do a better job. No, Keenan Especially Thompson. coming off of like Keenan and Kel. Like Yeah, he was coming off of Keenan and Kel and then to go straight into Fat Albert. Like it was a star it was his first starring role. Other than that, he was also in what the Mighty Ducks back in the in the nineties and stuff like that. So to go mm-hmm. from all that, Nickelodeon, all that, to yeah. Fat Albert was a sorely disappointment for me. I didn't. Well, I didn't even see it. I knew, I remember seeing the trailers, being like, "I don't think this is gonna be good." <laughs> right. Uh, I also uh, loved Kill Bill Volume Two that came out that year as well. Um, mm. You know, the conclusion to Kill Bill, which I feel that Quentin Tarantino should do a third one, but he's already confirmed that he's not doing a, a, another one. Um, you know, and, and it's sad because I would definitely like to see Uma Thurman go up against 
Black Mamba's daughter. I mean, uh, the daughter uh, yeah. from Vivica Fox. Um, and my recommended movie, um, I would have to say The Day After Tomorrow. Nice. Um, Day After Tomorrow was a, that I believe Dennis Quaid was in that movie, and um, Jake Gyllenhaal, Emily oh. Rawson. Yeah. Right. Wow. And to me, the day after tomorrow is kind of like what we're going through right now with COVID-19. <laughs> no one wants to listen to the guy who knows exactly what he's talking about. This is so, Dennis Quaid. <laughs> right. And in this case, it's Dennis Quaid. And, you know, he's Dr. Fauci. And then, of course, you know, we got Colt 45, you know, our celebrity <laughs> in chief, our president, Colt Beefy. Yeah. Our, you know, <laughs> so... Hey, I love you. <laughs> Great. <laughs> hey, I'm going to be honest about it, man. The day after tomorrow, if that were to come on right now, I would sit down and watch it. And honestly, I'm surprised I don't own it. Mm. Those are great picks, man. Oh, on top of that, we also have um, another movie that I liked as well was The Born Supremacy. I oh, yeah. Also, in the first one, would, uh, to me, and this brings up Chaz's point, if you were to, if Jason Bourne were to go up against James Bond, Jason Bourne wins. I'm sorry. There's Fair enough. Point. Fair enough. But I don't think Jason Bourne has has as many resources, so it depends on if this certain Bond can use his resources the right way. Okay, but you have to remember, Jason Bourne can make his own resources. <laughs> In the second movie, he used a book to crush a guy's thorax. Dude. I mean, <laughs> nice. a book. Nice. A book. <laughs> so, and then, just... the, and then the rocks walking tall. So other than that, um... walking tall. Oh, that and Kill Bill Two. I'm totally on board with you. Kill Bill Two is so underrated right. out of Tarantino's like library of movies. Very good. I agree. All right. Agree. I'm going to steal it from me. you, Chaz. I'm stealing it from you because I know you might have some of these. Okay. Or maybe not. We'll see. I'll start with the worst because worst is first, and that's Catwoman. Fuck that movie. <laughs> Hell no. I agree. Hell no. <laughs> no, this brings up Brent's point. This brings up Brent's point that this was a movie for a check. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. everyone has their paycheck here for me. Well, or even worse, was a, it wasn't. <laughs> oh, they're oh, like we're her, making the greatest new superhero it. film <laughs> dude but i'll, I'll argue like this, it's probably gonna be better than the snyder cut so yeah i heard you say that shit before and i've got mute on standby for damn that. it chaz <laughs> um, <laughs> we're not supposed to bring up the snyder cut <laughs> <laughs> that's all that's all i really have for the worst because really like that one that one's the mm. only one where you really you watch the basketball scene and you watch the editing during that scene, and it's cut like how Liam Neeson jumps over a fence and taken. There's like 50 cut scenes to get one man over a tiny fence. There's about 5,000 cut scenes to have Halle Berry look competent playing a basketball game with someone. It's ridiculous. But let's see, you know, for my recommendations, this is one that maybe not a lot of people have watched, but I really like it. It's a David O. Russell film. I Heart Huckabees is super fun to watch. I have not seen that one. I haven't seen, I've it. Not seen that one. It's really good. You've got, um, oh crap, I'm going to already get every name wrong. Let me pull the thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he owns it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I do. Dedication. Maybe. I love I the dedication. Not. I don't have it. No, I'm just kidding. It's somewhere over there. Uh, who's the guy that's always in um, Wes Anderson films? Jason something. Schwartzman? Is that, is that his last name? He was Gideon in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Oh! Uh, it's oh. Jason something. Jason yeah. Schwartzman, yeah. Yes. Schwartzman. Cool, I got it. Yes, still got my cred. So yeah, he <laughs> is the lead in it. He's going through an existential crisis. He works for a company that does uh, that's trying to basically save... Uh, this marsh that a big industrial clothing shop or something is being built under. He's working with the company whose head is Jude Law, and they're basically fighting each other over um, the company wanting to take over the land and uh, Jason Sportsman, like just writing poetry about rocks and hoping that that will stop a bulldozer from trying to tear apart something. He goes and meets these two people, Lily Tomlin and Dustin Hoffman, who are called existential therapists, existential investigators, were essentially in a very deadpan, uh, just really funny type of way. They're going into his life philosophically, 
and they're and they're just dissecting every bit of him and and it's really interesting it's a funny movie i highly recommend it 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 definitely see it high even that might actually make it a little better who knows uh other recommendation shrek 2 i know we we don't really talk a ton about it right now but shrek 2 has like an avengers endgame level pump up at the end the i need a hero sequence go watch that it's insane how much it builds up you know i have to watch shrek every single day <laughs> um, <laughs> Because Luther has it on his tablet, it's a religious thing. If he's not watching Shrek, he's watching Shrek 2. If he's not watching Shrek 2, he's watching Shrek Lee Ever After. Uh, if he's not watching that, he's re-watching the trailer for uh, Far, Far Away Idol from Shrek. Or he, he, <laughs> dude, I'm all shrek out, okay? Don't get me wrong. I love the adult humor. I do. But there is some times where you just got to sit there and be like, all right, son, enough is enough. Nice. Enough is enough. I've got a 2004 movie exactly like that. I have an Enough is Enough movie. And what is that it? is Phantom of the fucking Opera. Oh. Yes. Bring that up. You're I was going to bring that up. Of Joel Schumacher. How dare you? Fuck that movie. No, That's but, all no, I have to say. No, but <laughs> that was my first uh -uh. Day <laughs> movie. Brad, Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. 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 Get him. I'm putting, go. Actually, I'm putting on your music. Hold on. I'm putting on your music. <laughs> Oh, I was going to give my list. I was going to say, actually, Phantom of the Opera is on my best of. So, oh! I know. Wow. <laughs> wow. That is one of my favorite musicals. Um, not, yes, take it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not a huge musical fan, but I think that's like one of the memorable things of 2004. When I think that, I think Gerard Butler and, and uh, Emily Rossum, who, or Emmy Rossum, sorry, uh, who was in Day After Tomorrow, too. So. Hmm. Mm -hmm. it's kind of a it's kind of a fun film in that sense but um i also have Shaun of the dead as one of my favorite films of 2004 yes. very, You're right very that was, that actually was one of the movies i would watch uh at my friend's sleepover and you know i was in third fourth grade at this time so like it was like one of those r-rated movies we have to watch late at night when everybody's in bed and mm -hmm. so it's one of my first introductions to comedy and gore in that sense oh, yeah. um my favorite part is when he turns off the music as a zombie <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I gotta bring up uh, my other favorite before you go. Collateral. Okay. I was Ooh. gonna say that too, motherfucker. <laughs> yes, it is, it is a great, great movie. Definitely check it out if you guys haven't. There's a, there's also underrated, I suppose you could say, for like the village and garden state. But um mm. oh I guess Anchorman is also one of my favorites because just because my age group and how I was watching it religiously, much like Jay's son, I just watched it all the time. We didn't have tablets, so I was just going through the VHS and burning through it. I shit you not. Luther is sitting right there right now watching <laughs> Shrek 1 right now. I am telling you the truth. He's sitting right there spinning his thing watching Shrek. Can I ask, has it, did anybody else see Luther walk past with tongs that he was using to fan himself? No. Okay. I saw that and I tried so hard not to break because it was the best thing I'd ever seen. You know, I'm glad you didn't because I was trying to like stay, you know. It was awesome. With him. <laughs> <laughs> so. all right that's i'm i'm spent Chaz, give us the rest tell us okay, what you got collateral is also on my best list uh tom cruise does an excellent job in that it's actually my first introduction to michael mann um, oh yeah really? yeah but um it's, it's shot so beautifully but as far as worst films go i'll do my underrated last because i have more than that um you have mean girls on it do you not for underrated do you have it on anything yes good Okay. Uh, for worse, <laughs> for, for worse, I have Scooby Doo too. Uh, my wife does not want to hear you say that. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> I, I also he have a Scooby Doo fan. I also have Starsky and Hutch. Oof, yeah, that's. I, I, I'll agree with you on that one. And I also have Unfortunate Events because I, I don't think that is a good movie either. Damn. I was giving you shit for it because I think Jim Carrey is. Yeah, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> You're right. I'll, oh, I also have. Um, okay, we'll, we'll do. We'll do my underrated. Here's here's my stuff that I actually enjoy watching. That's not my favorite necessarily, right? Blade Trinity. Interesting. I, I saw that at a young age, and I thought the action was badass. My first introduction to Ryan Reynolds. Um, really? Yeah, dude, it's fun. Slow motion at the very end. I think. It, I think the third act's really fun to watch. And also, Triple H. I was in wrestling then too. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Van Helsing with Hugh Jackman and Kate Beckinsale. I could watch that too. That was actually a pretty fun movie. It's a very lie. fun movie. Yeah, yeah. 
I saw that in the drive-in, so that was kind of a fun thing. 13 going on 30. Very fun movie, weirdly enough. I liked <laughs> yeah. that movie. Yes. Um, then I also have Mean Girls. And then for the last one, I have The Punisher. Whoa, let's oh, hold yes. up, hold up. Mean Girls Wait, is Wait, that's the Thomas a... Jane one? Tom, yes. Yeah, Thomas Jane one, yeah. The, the, that's the first one, the, the, the one the, they, they came out <laughs> with. That, I think you hurt Brent a little on that. Okay, I, I, I loved, here's the thing. I loved The Punisher back then. I, I probably watched it when I was too young. Um, I had a video game of it when it was out on Xbox where you would just punish people, right? Like kill them and stuff. And I thought it was fun for being in fourth, fifth grade or whatever it was. And I definitely too young at the time for sure. But that, that left an impact on me. I, I liked Thomas Jane as The Punisher. I think he's better than the, the TV series, The Punisher, so... Really quick, whoa, Mean Girls whoa, is incredible, still whoa. stands up. If I don't say that, my wife is going to kill me. It's her favorite yeah, movie. Mean Girls is amazing. I, I saw that in theater twice, fun fact. Mm. So, Also, we got to talk Hellboy a little bit because Hellboy is oh, really, really shit. good. Guillermo yes. del Toro, really. I loved that film. W wasn't that Guillermo del Toro's first like big screen movie? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. But let's, uh, that Rasputin villain oh. helped him so much. The thing's like... Whoo, whoo, with his sword stuff. Oh, man. So good. If I may interject on the Punisher real quick, I have a recommendation for you if you like yeah. Thomas Jane. Um, do you know who Addy Shanker is? Addy Shanker is a producer. Uh, he's famous for directing and doing the animation studio behind the Castlevania series on Netflix. Mm, I do not. Addy no. Shanker did a bootleg series like five to ten years ago or something like that. Is this the short where, film? Yeah, the short film. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. did the he did the short film for The Punisher with Thomas Jane, and it also has uh, who's the guy Ron Perlman is also yep. in it, mm -hmm. and that's really good. Like yeah. I was gonna recommend that to you. So. Yeah. No, I, I I that was actually brought up on Twitter today because Thomas Jane's made some asshole comments. Uh, huh. recently. Oh no. Uh, yeah, I know it kind of tainted. It, it, there's a lot of actors now that are making all these asshole comments, and it like taints my opinion on them completely. Right. Mm -hmm. 2020 Punisher, is just a reckoning year i'll tell you what like there's people where it's like man i didn't know it that i needed to dislike you <laughs> um, <laughs> but i go, do now <laughs> um <laughs> going back to going back to jay what you were saying about uh del toro his uh the devil's backbone is probably his first major major one that hit like full-on in, okay. in the horror genre and he also did blade 2 which is pretty badass uh, okay so, more yeah. films steven um, spielberg's the terminal Incredible. I love that film. Captain Zeta Jones, right. Tom Hanks, great chemistry. The right, Notebook. Bro. We got to say The Notebook too, because that came out and that was Ryan every Gosling. girl's thing. <laughs> that turned every girl in the vicinity of Ryan Gosling into a water slide. True. Um, there are a few movies that we're forgetting about, like The Aviator and also Million Dollar Baby. Um, I actually thoroughly enjoyed Million Dollar Baby. I like Clint Eastwood's performance in that. And uh, we're also forgetting the Chronicles of Riddick. That's are we? It's That's bad. No, yes, we are. Yes, we are forgetting that. That's a badass yeah. film. All right. Did we yes. mention iRobot? Oh, no, and then we'll see iRobot. iRobot's a fairly big one. Open Water was something I think we referenced last movie, last time, but I, it's also from this year as well. I don't know how that works. Was there any uh, others on this? Yeah. Did anyone, uh, does anyone care for Jimmy Fallon and Queen Latifah and Taxi? <laughs> That's that might be. Was it one of the worst? It got a razzie. It, 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 it was. It was one of the worst. But it was <laughs> to me. It was. It actually wasn't a, a bad movie. It just showed that you know she has a passion for cars, and as a car guy, I can appreciate that. And yeah. then we also have Starship Troopers too. Ooh, yep. There's also House of the Flying Daggers. We House have Flying Spanglish, Daggers. Hotel Rwanda, Meet the Fockers. The Aviator. Oh, wait, wait a second, we can't go past Hotel Rwanda. Don I would Cheadle say Hotel such, Rwanda. Ho I mean, Don Cheadle did such a spectacular job. He was going up against Brad Pitt and Troy that year. Mm. Troy, we didn't mention Troy. Troy. Yes. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's always at the last minute where we're busting out all the actual titles. Right? That <laughs> Hotel got, Rwanda should not be overlooked for sure. No, it it, it, def it definitely shouldn't. Along with Denzel Washington, the Maturian Candidate, and as well as the uh, remake of Dawn of the Dead. Oh, it was Zack Snyder. What do you yeah. think that's of that, that's Jazz? A, that's what do you think of, my, of that? Now, here's the thing. So here's I Okay, let me tie this thing because I said I was going to bring it up <laughs> last time. So <laughs> last time we're talking about Finding Nemo, right? This time we're talking about Dawn of the Dead. There was a double feature. Oh yeah. There was a double feature in the drive-in where I the night we went to go see Finding Nemo and Dawn of the Dead, my fish was eaten that day. 
when I went to go visit my dad's. And for whatever reason, he's like, well, we'll go see Finding Nemo. And then you have to sleep during this Dawn of the Dead movie. So I watched that whole movie because, you know, like it's rated R and I was like third grade, fourth grade. I watched it with the blanket over my face, you know, like kind of stretch across my eye to like watch it. And I actually, I, I do think the Dawn of the Dead remake is solid. I think if Zack Snyder sticks to practical stuff, he does a really good job. And there's like a lot of stuff that went into that film where like the age of the zombies would depend on like the, the color of the blood. Like the darker right. the blood, the older the zombie was. Like how badass is that? And they also hooked up all the actors with like squibs themselves and they would uh, uh-huh. blast them themselves. Like, dude, badass movie. Good recommendation, Jay. Yes, underrated. Yes, very, very much so. We forgot to mention um, Ray as well and the Polar Express. I'm wait, sorry. Ray, I came, Ray, Ray, Ray came out that year at that? Ali came out that year. I'm showing Ray came out. And I think Ali came out a couple years ago. I remember two, using the 2001. I, I think that oh, 2001. Was that a 2001? Mm, Shark so. Tale was oh. also a Will Smith movie that came out. Yeah, we won't talk about that. Shark <laughs> Tale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't I, forget, you got served. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I actually watched that movie. <laughs> oh, I actually, um, I, that, I thought that movie was tight when I saw it, but I was like 16 years old. So right, and we also have Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix and John Travolta in Ladder 49. Ooh, yeah, I remember that one as well. Uh, Why are we I don't not know, talking about Yu-Gi-Oh? Fahrenheit 9/11 came out. Speaking of today, yeah. right? Yeah, documentary came out. Um, Hold on, let me check out Ladder 49. I didn't really know how to pitch director was today that. with that. Because I, I, a part of me was like, should we ask everybody first if we should, if you guys want to do this? And, and you know, you know, it's 9-11. We have to, I guess we, we now should address it because we've referenced it twice as jokes <laughs> and if not actually addressed it, addressed it. Um, seriously, this is when I, I went back and watched Jon Stewart's clips of The Daily Show when, when it happened. And he spoke so eloquently about just uh, his viewpoint from the apartment, he said, was the World Trade Center. And he started breaking down a little bit. And he was, and he was like, and it's, it's, it's a horrible situation. And, and now I look out that window and do you know what the view is? It's the Statue of Liberty. And he was talking about the fact that America has already won because of the first responders and because of the people that showed up and put their life on the line to try to help and save people and and go through the rubble and and get horrible diseases as well that john stewart also fought to to be able to get covered for health and Um, he's still fighting for that by the way he was just earlier this year sitting i believe in january december or january he was sitting in front of a senate committee and he was chewing them out because they want to reallocate those funds to something else which come to find out donald trump did that anyway so yeah, there's a um, new report that came out today. Yeah. So I'm just sitting here like, how can you take away from someone who's doing so much to, you know, they helped New York. They were the ones who brought New York back. And now we're sitting here taking money away from them for medical attention where people still need medical attention to this day because of all the stuff that they breathe in, just trying to help other people out doing their jobs Mm -hmm. for you. They didn't have to do that, but they did. And it's sad that they have to sit there and he just went off. And you know what? I totally fucking agree with him. And if I ever hear anyone talk bad about what John Stewart's doing for the FDNY and the the fund that he's been so preciously fighting for the last 20 years, well, 19 years, but it feels like 20. I was walking to school that day. I was a senior in high school. I was walking to school, Whittier High School on Philadelphia Avenue. And all of a sudden I see my friend, he's watching, I think this was like in the pre-stages of YouTube. And he was like, dude, we're going to war. I was like, what do you mean we're going to war? He's like, the World Trade Center just fell. And I was like, Got on the phone as soon as I got to class and I called my dad. I was like, are you doing all right? He's like, nah, I'm pretty pissed. I'm pretty pissed. And I was like, all right, I'll be home as soon as I'm done here at school. He was like, you better because we got a lot of work to do. And we started putting supplies together to send to those guys. We went to our local fire shop and we actually dropped stuff off for them. Because they were on, they were getting ready to load up and drive their fire engine all the way up to New York to go help. So let someone say something crazy around me i will break their fucking face i believe it <laughs> all right i'm done done yeah. and right 
Sorry, I, I, I totally took that point away from you, Patrick. I'm you didn't, sorry. dude. You enhanced it, and you, and you, <laughs> you, you, you gave us you gave us really the greatest <laughs> the greatest thing that I don't have anything else to say about it because you've said pretty much I think what all of all of us are thinking. Um, right. We will never forget, and yeah, I'll yeah. I don't know how to end this, but saying that I'm happy to be able to be with you guys, to be able to communicate like virtually. It's crazy that I'm meeting, like I'm talking with Jay over it, all the way in LA. Um, I'm in San Diego, brother. San Diego. I don't know where anybody lives, man. I'm <laughs> next, I'm next to Comic-Con, okay? I am next to Comic-Con, okay? There we go. Oh, fuck. Okay. But like, we've had so many great experiences with people, being able to communicate, being able to be in this group of friends and yeah, I think friendship and, and, and having that community to, to help build you up is, is part of what makes this podcast great. And I really want to thank you guys for doing that. So Jay, tell the people where they can find you and what you're working on, man. Uh, you guys can catch me uh, right here on YouTube and on Facebook. I'll start posting videos up on Facebook on Let's Talk About It. I already have two episodes out where you can see Chaz and Patrick on, <laughs> um, on my second episode, which was a great episode, might I add. Uh, there are spoilers. I did put that in the warning, so there are spoilers. Um, but it's like maybe a 30-minute spoiler rant, a fight between Patrick and Chaz, which was think, great, by the way. I don't think anybody <laughs> has ever riled me up as much as Chaz did <laughs> on that episode. I, right. I, I, I was screaming. I was screaming. I, I don't do that. It was crazy. <laughs> You were like, calm down, <laughs> right? And uh, I'll also be. I'm working on episode three of Let's Talk About It, and I'm working on a series. Uh, I'm. I feel like I'm stealing this from VH1, but uh, let's talk about the '90s. Is what I'm going to call it. So, um, yeah, very cool. Where we very talk cool. about '90 movies, uh, like The Negotiator, uh, stuff like that. Movies that were made in the '90s with less CGI in them, with great acting. Very cool, man. Thank you again for being on. Of course, we're going to have you on it. And another day. We appreciate oh, you. Yeah. Brent, Propaganda Holotape is out. Please go check it out on Spotify. I'm very excited to have had you on, man. Where can the people find you? Um, either right there on Spotify or uh, I have all my leather work that I've been posting on AB Walker Leatherworks on Instagram. And I've been posting pretty up, like fo like photos regularly, and I will continue posting them as I continue finishing some projects that I've uh, been working on lately. So very cool. Thank you again for coming on. And Chaz, over and under artist exposed that just came out with a new episode. No. Yep, every Friday came out with Albert. I don't know how to say his last name. We joked about it on the episode, so it's okay. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, we have that. Um, Check that out. I am posting, I am catching up my YouTube videos of those. So if anybody wants to watch those on YouTube, they will be up by tomorrow. Very cool, man. Your, your hair is growing, by the way. Have I mentioned that? You oh, got dude. these little curls coming down. Did, did you not oh, see his shit. face? Did you not see his Facebook post earlier? Man. This... I saw that. That was spectacular, by the way. <laughs> I like your little photo spread. Dude, I think, I think uh, when you and I started doing the podcast, my hair was like shorter, you know? We need new thumbnails was, is what you just told me. Yeah. Well, I mean, dude, it's basically like when I was going to get my hair cut is when quarantine hit. And then I haven't really, I'm like, I kind of want to keep it growing through quarantine just to see how long it is. I'm like, this is what fucking happens when nobody fucking follows guidelines. See, that's why I just cut that's... my hair myself and I just go bald. <laughs> <laughs> You're spite growing your hair. That's amazing. I love it. You guys can also check out Chaz on PatrickBadyReviews.com with his reviews. He's coming out with some new Denis Villeneuve. I've made that rhyme three times. Denis Villeneuve stuff. And with Dune trailer coming out, uh, yeah, get it ready for some real cool shit. Spectacular, by the way, Chaz. Doesn't I just it? Wanted to mention. It looks really good. The trailer? Oh, dude, I, I cried. I, I cried during the I cried both teasers. There was one in Tenet and one the day before announcing when it was going to come out. Right. And then it dropped. And I was on Twitter because apparently it appeared on Twitter exclusively first where Stephen Colbert was talking with them about right. the process of making it. And it was like 25 fucking minutes of amazingness watching these actors talk about it. I'm like, okay, where is the trailer? Like, where is the trailer? I have to work. And then it dropped and I cried. And then I fucking rewatched it and reshared it. And dude, 
I love it though. It was great. Thoughts galore. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. We should put a thing up. You should write something for that as well. We've got other reviews. Enola Holmes is coming out. Also, uh, The Devil All the Time is going to be coming out as a review soon. That new Netflix film with Tom Holland and Robert Pattinson, Ooh. and Possessor that happened at Sundance. Oh yeah. I'm, Sundance I'm excited one. for that one, dude. I'm. Yeah, me too. That <laughs> film. Holy fuck. Is all I'm gonna say. That that's gonna be a great, great okay. horror film. This okay, year. Qu qu question for you, because you, you do you know uh, Cronenberg? I'm trying to wrap this up, goddamn. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. but Cronenberg with the fly, you know how like like the body mutates and shit. That's his son doing the possessor. So like, is it similar to the fly of like body mutation shit? Well, I think we're just gonna have to find out when that review drops. I'm yeah. so oh wow, what a segue! Uh, so I gotta thank you guys. We will see you at the next <laughs> review. Peace out, Mother Ups. <laughs> <laughs>